Oh, hey there. Come on in. We're just about to start. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a fun weekly podcast about nutrition and healthy lifestyle. I'm Rob, and together with my wife Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative and entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. Join us each week as we strive to help you with transforming your overall health and relationship with food through up to date, evidence based nutrition information. As people come indoors from summer activities, we need to look at our nutrition and we've got 11 nutrition tips for fall to keep our immune system strong. Everything from soups to stews and apple crumble with that bounty of fruit. Here's the ultimate list of health tips for fall. We've got you covered. Enjoying the show? You can help others find it and enjoy it too by giving us a five-star rating or review. If you feel like reaching out to us with a question or comment, you can send us an email at mywifetherd at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit our website at mywifethedietitian.com, as well as our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Enjoy the show. Welcome to My Wife the Dietitian. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm great. We're into this fall season. Almost. It's still technically summer. It's fall weather. Getting there. Yeah. I like the fall. It's my favorite season. It's a bit more mellow. It's still nice, but it's a bit more mellow. Yeah. We're not like, like hard into fall, like in the really dark days and rain and everything at this point no it's still nice yeah although it's raining at the moment oh (laughs) just started it was sunny earlier it was yeah that's fall for you so we're doing 11 nutrition tips for fall or autumn as some people say oh really we Mm -hmm. have to eat different in the fall uh we gotta eat well it's important to keep your immune system strong oh right that's and, true you know all the everybody's coming back from doing their outdoor stuff and all the beer and barbecue diet we gotta like get back into the better healthy routines and and yeah i hear you that makes sense yeah yeah that's right we did the school hacks last week the nutrition nuggets all about getting on the right track with your when you're starting back at school so yeah, this is uh it's a different it's a different season and generally, you know, we want to um we're starting to cook more in the kitchen using, you know, soups and stews, but hey, we're like jumping ahead here. Yeah. I guess we do that. I just never really thought about it. But yeah. All right. So here we go. We're going to talk about what did you say? 11 nutrition tips, tips for fall. For the fall. Yeah. All right. All right, so number one is using seasonal produce. Pumpkins. (laughs) Lots of pumpkins. That's what comes to mind. It's like that fall color is orange, eh? It is. Well, there's, yeah, I'm just being silly, but pumpkins obviously do fit in there, but not just pumpkins. There's probably other things like squash. Yeah. Well, everything. I mean, it's a harvest season, right? Yeah, exactly. It's It's like everything. Everything is bountiful at the moment. Yeah, butternut squash and... Spaghetti squash. And squash is great because it lasts in your pantry for quite a while. Exactly. And then you can use it and we can make soups with it. And yeah. So other seasonal produce, I mean, some of the um, end of summer tomatoes and cucumbers that are just finishing up. Right. We use those. And then leafy greens. You can always get the, you know, kale and collard greens and chard and different leafy greens out of the garden yeah you got there's something there year round but less plentiful in the off season right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah. and then apples lots of apples and pears pumpkin as you said sweet potatoes and kale they're all in season so those are all some ideas to try to buy local maybe go to farmers markets get produce that's uh Around your region, if you can. Yeah, there's lots lots around right now. So take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, number two actually goes with this, and making hearty soups and stews. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, in the summer, you don't necessarily want to be cooking over a hot stove when it's hot out. And no. so you go outside and cook at barbecue and stuff. But it's fall, get back into the kitchen and start to making some nice warm soups and getting those, uh, the stove top going. Get that stove top going. Yeah, we've and got an, oven. an instant pot, which is a, a game changer because you can just, I don't actually use it much. Sandra does, and she's amazing with the Instant Pot. Ooh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, that just, I don't want <laughs> so to get in your funny. way. That's why I let you do it, because you do such a good job of it. So, I Well, think, it's not very hard. You just throw a bunch of stuff in well, that's and what I, set and forget. That's what I was just going to say, yeah. You're, you've mastered that. <laughs> and uh, and it's so good, because you don't have to, like, watch over it like you would a pot on the stove, you know? And... uh yeah, you just put it in and you put the lid on and, and go about your business. And then at lunchtime or sometimes like sooner, it's it's ready to go. Yeah, yeah. It's really It's quick. amazing. It really is an instant pot. Yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. And then you can actually set it in the morning and then have it on slow cook. So it can be a slow cook mm -hmm. or instant pot, which is like usually 30 to 50 minutes. It's whatever it is Yeah, because it's a pressure cook. And then we've got, I mean, that lasts for days. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And it's good hearty stuff and there's everything. And it's kind of like, um, it reminds me of like that, that kid's cereal where the kids are like searching in their bowl for like, like there's like Alphabet? Le letters. Yeah. Alphabet maybe soup. like little treasures or whatever. <laughs> it's like you pu pull up your spoon and like, oh, what's, what's this? Hilarious. What else? Oh, there's this in there too. Oh, neat. Yeah, no, I love it. It's it makes it interesting, and it's obviously very hearty and healthy. And I love um, when I go to open the fridge and eat lunch, and there's some of that in there. I'm like, perfect. It's everything I know. It's everything I need because you made it, and I know there's lots of good stuff in it. And it's like perfect. It's one stop shopping. It's like have the a bowl of this prescription in the fridge, right? kind of, yeah. but tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, it's exactly. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and the next one goes along with that, flavor your fall. So when we're making those soups and stews, we're putting lots of garlic and onions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the spices and herbs. So any of those, you can use sage with your chicken. You can use oregano. There's uh, cinnamon and cloves. And rosemary. And, Isn't that good with chicken too? Yeah, that's yeah. delicious. Yeah. So yeah. good. And then, you know, the pumpkin pie spice. So that's like the nutmeg, allspice, ginger, cinnamon, maybe clove. So all of those are pretty fall-related spices that mm -hmm. you start using in their cooking. And so good. Mm -hmm. And it's it's good. I mean, it's good for keeping your immune system strong too. Because a lot of these, like garlic, we did a whole episode on Nutrition Nuggets Ten, all about garlic and how important it is as an antioxidant and helpful for, to keep your immune system strong. Are we going to talk about dessert at all anywhere? Because I don't want to like jump ahead on your list here. No, tell me about dessert. Okay. So last night at that potluck dinner we were at, oh. we had the best apple crumble. And it reminded me of a of a crumble that I make, which is, I'll, I'll just share my little recipe with yeah. you now. Yeah. It's it, so it, delicious. I, I call it like instant I use pears because we have so many pears and I was just looking for a way to use up pears, but we'll call it the instant crumble and you can use it with apples or pears or whatever. But pears are delicious because when you heat them, it brings out the sweetness in them. It, it, like there's some oh, reaction, yeah. right? So you put a bit of butter in the frying pan, you cut your pear up or maybe three or four pears, depending on how many people want some. With the skin? Yeah. I just slice it. Slice it off the edges mm. of the pear and leave the, the core in the middle. The Bartlett pear. Bartlett pear. I think it would work with any pears. I don't, I've never tried other pears, but I'm sure it would be similar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you heat them up for a few minutes, just until it's kind of gets a soft. You'll see them when they get kind of soft and squishy and they smell good. Then they're done. You throw it in a bowl. You put some granola on top of it, which is like your instant crumble topping. And maybe a little bit of French vanilla yogurt or some vanilla mm. ice cream. Mm. And voila, you have your crumble. That it's, sounds like it could be dessert or it could be breakfast. Or it could be lunch. Yeah. 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 Or exactly. dinner. <laughs> but it's it's literally five minutes and you got this like awesome, because who doesn't love crumble, especially when it's hot? Oh, it's like yeah. the It's like fresh apple pie, you know? It's so good. 
and, and the crunchy topping. Especially with the cinnamon in there. Oh, it's just so, it smells like. It smells like yumminess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So give that a try. It's it's easy and it's a good way to use up, you know, some some pears that maybe aren't as, as good to for regular eating. Mm-hmm. You're cooking them up, they're going to get all soft and squishy anyway, so. True. So yeah. if they're like, if you have bruised or pears that are kind of going off. Yeah. Or like I said, apples will be good too. It's like apple pie, apple crumble. They're all kind of the same. This one had blueberries in it and a really yummy. She used granola for the top too, but she put it in the frying pan and mm. heated it with some butter and then it made it even crunchier or something like that. She said it was, I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I had, good. I had so much of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't want her to have to take it all home. <laughs> I was, You're I was hilarious. doing my part, right? Yeah. But yeah, good job on that. Yeah, that was delicious. Thank you. All right, number four. Uh, and this actually just, you can use your recipe you just were talking about to do this, boost your immunity. With apple crisp? Sure. All right. Yeah. But while well, you, you know, eating those seasonal produce, you want the colors, lots of colors. So the greens and the oranges, especially. So the beta carotene. Remember, we uh, did a we did a whole episode, two episodes, episode three and four, boost your immunity. Yeah, and we talked specifically all about different vitamins and minerals we need to make sure we keep our immune system strong through the cold and flu season. Yeah. So we want to get enough vitamin D also because we're not outside as much and we're not going to get exposure to the sun, and so we definitely should be getting some extra vitamin C, probably supplementing either through your multivitamin mineral or through a single dose supplement of vitamin D, about 1,000 to 2,000 IU. Per day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Most, a lot of people are deficient in vitamin D if they're not having supplements just because it's one that it's hard to get in our food supply and it's a sunshine vitamin and, and coming into October we won't be getting, we won't be converting the hormone in our skin. Right, from the sunshine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah something to think about. Definitely, yeah, especially the northern hemisphere. Yeah. Um, zinc. So zinc's really important to help prevent those viruses to get into our cells. Oh, right. Yeah, so where, we remember we talked about zinc? Zinc is in fish and meat and... You got uh, it. Seafood. There's, there's some, yeah, mostly meat, right? And nuts and seeds. And green stuff. Yeah. Was it in like green leafy? Mm, that's the lutein. Okay. But it's in, um, well, it's, it's a mineral, so it's in plants and it's also in animals so it's in seafood but like the big sources of zinc are are mostly oysters like meat seafood remember oysters oh yeah oysters the for sexy sure foods we did sexy foods yeah that was in there and then um yes uh sunflower seeds are really high in zinc oh really and pumpkin seeds and hmm. yeah yeah tuna tuna yeah well, all those things yeah nuts and whole grains so also with immune system I mentioned the beta carotene, so carrots and squash and all the seasonal produce we talked about back a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. And also the reds, so you think the red, the beets are so good. And Oh, yeah. Santa made this awesome beet salad for our potluck dinner last night. It was delicious. I thought it was cabbage when I looked at it because it kind of like was grated down the way. There was cabbage in it. And, yeah, and there was cabbage in it, but it was so good. And everyone was like, oh, my God, this is so delicious. Is this beet salad? And- <laughs> Yeah, it was tasty. Oh, yeah. What it was, was not too What was in that? Beet and green cabbage and pumpkin seeds, carrot. You just whipped that up when I was having a nap. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm like, we could bring something to the potluck. I know. It ended up being a hit. Yeah, that was delish. That was I didn't good. know what we were going to bring, and then boof, there there it is. Well, I, we didn't have much in the fridge, but I did have those beets from, there's a market stand down the street, so grab those, and then... We had some carrots, and I think the dressing ended up being olive oil and squeezed lemon, and that was really tiny rice vinegar. Yeah, it was it was tasty. You yeah. know, beets aren't the most attractive looking vegetable. Like in the, the the, it's not like you open the fridge and go, "Ooh, look at that beet." 
Like it's all dirty <laughs> and it's got like stringy things on it, like the roots or whatever, the tentacles or whatever they're called. Tentacles. They're, You're so well, funny. What are they? What are those things called? <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean, though. It's like, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not something you're like, oh, yeah, I want a big it's bite a root, of that. It's a root, so it's got, like, it's, well, it's just got the... root stuff on it. Yeah. yeah. I think tentacles is appropriate. It's kind of what they look like. I think that's more like, uh, I'm thinking seafood have tentacles or well, I know. Uh, it's not... like an insect. Yeah, it's not anyway. the exact definition, but <laughs> or like octopus? similar. Octopus. What? Anyways, Squid. okay, we're so on a tangent. Okay, That's let's get back fun. to our list. You're I so love funny. tangents. <laughs> okay, number five. We're almost halfway done here. Hey, hey. Watch portion sizes. So that's a big thing, you know, especially if you've been really active in the summer and like you're outdoors, you're doing all this activity, and then we get into the season where we're you're inside a lot more. And, oh, true. You know, sitting and reading more, maybe watching more movies, or just doing things inside. If if you don't have a planned, you know, uh, sport that you do, that's maybe in the gym or uh, game, like um, squash or you know, some sort of indoor sport that you might do. If you're not thinking about mm -hmm. being as active, yeah. So when when we're outside and doing all that fun summer stuff you might be moving more and you can eat whatever it just feels like you can just eat and you burn it off so just uh episode 66 we talked all about portion size and our hand is a good um guide yeah a good guide for portion a really good guide yeah because bigger people have bigger hands and smaller, smaller people have small hands yeah. like Tip kids. typically yeah yeah absolutely so that's a good uh, rule of thumb. Ha ha. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Palm to the face. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're full of sorry. them today. Just... Okay. All right. Number six is whole grains. So making sure you're getting some whole grains in there. And we do eat the whole grains for the... Oh, for the fiber. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. We need our fiber. We need that fiber. To help keep us regular and just to help our blood sugar control, keep our cholesterol under good control. And yeah, having some whole grains and trying to make at least half of the grains that you eat in the day to be the the whole grain. So uh, meaning if you have rice or if you're eating cereal or bread or whatever grains that you're including in the day, try to have at least half of those grains to be the whole grains. So more than two grams of fiber per serving. Right. Exactly. All right. The next one is six. Number six is prioritize protein. Yeah. You got to get your protein. Yeah. Every meal. Every meal. Pretty much every meal. You get yep. enough protein. We did uh, episode 47 was protein pop quiz. Where I quizzed you, Rob, you and did. Uh, you did really well. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> gold star. I did get two gold stars, I think. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Episode 42 was all about beans. Beans are good for your heart. So we talked a bit about protein there too. Yeah, because beans are full of protein. They're really good alternative source of protein, plant-based protein. And we talked to uh, Vegan for Runners. I can't remember what episode, but it was with Scott Fickerson. 45, I, I think. Okay. Yeah. And then with Vicento Molina mm -hmm. was... Most recently. Yeah. That was all about plant-powered protein. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, it's vegan. Not, it's not just meat. Yeah. There's so many good sources of protein out there other than meat. And uh, yeah, check them out. Because obviously if you had to have meat at every meal, it would get a little bit much. Right. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, meat, chicken, fish eggs dairy, dairy yeah. and then you got the beans and the nuts and seeds and all the soy uh tofu soy tofu all that stuff yeah there's so many different sources of protein and, and you can incorporate that into all your meals yeah um meals and snacks so yeah protein's a good thing to include to help our building blocks of our immune system and keep our <laughs> muscles strong and all right number seven is eat your breakfast Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so many people skip their breakfast or they have a coffee and a donut or something and it's just not a great way to start the day. Yeah. And, you know, break the fast. So, you know, breakfast, that's, it's 
that's what it's called. And that's what it means is breaking the fast because you probably haven't eaten for probably eight hours, six, eight, 10 hours. Exactly. 12 hours. So, you know, not, it doesn't have to be right away. Some people just aren't hungry first thing in the morning. That's fine. But within two hours, especially if you're going off and you got to go to school or you're, you know, you need to think, you got to have some brain power. Well, if you have something at breakfast that will help with the energy for your brain and for your mood and yeah. just for fuels all the systems, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. And the next one is enjoy healthy fats. Oh, okay. Yeah. The fats, the healthy fats. Yeah. We did a whole episode, episode 23, all about fats, grease, and oils. And that was a really comprehensive episode discussing like What's the difference between healthy fats and oils and not so healthy oils, not so healthy fats? So that's a really good one to rewind and, and listen to again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how to cook. Like some oils aren't good to cook with, not, yeah. aren't good to heat. That's um, right. You know, I've, I am very aware of putting flax, ground flax seed on my oatmeal in the morning after it's been in the microwave. Ah. After my oatmeal has been in the microwave, because you're like, no, you don't want to heat the flax seeds. You got to put that on after. Right, right. Because it breaks it down. And, and other oils that you're using for, for cooking. You yeah, I remember the Italians, like in the Mediterranean diet, they they add the oil after their pasta is cooked. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, at the end, they put their oil on because it's good for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins, but it's not cooking with oil per se yeah so yeah we get into it in depth in that episode what did you say it was 20, episode 23 23 yeah, yeah so really give that a one. listen it's it was an eye-opening one for me for sure yeah and we did one on episode 55 on avocados the awesome oh, avocados so, they are so good yeah that was right after mexico <laughs> i wish we could grow like like yeah the the avocados in mexico and probably other parts of the world too i'm sure in the mediterranean they're amazing Mm. But it's something I wish so, we could have here because yeah, they're big, fresh avocados. There's nothing like it. Oh, yeah. So good. And yeah, th those are healthy fat. That's another avocado oil is another good oil to use. Right. Kind of pricey, but and definitely olive oil. But those uh, those two items give you some good fats. And same with fish and seafood and walnuts and nuts and seeds. and Yeah, there's lots on that list. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And then uh, almost at the end here, we got two more. So number 10, number 10 is mindful eating. So just being aware of that you're eating. So sitting down and like actually having an experience with your meal and not just eating on the run or dashboard dining or, you know, distracted eating, like actually take the time, sit down and enjoy your meal and your mind and body will, your your body will realize that you're eating and your brain will realize that you're eating if you actually sit down and eat instead of just mindlessly watching TV with, you know, your hand in the bag of chips or whatever. And we want to look at the reasons we're eating. So halt. So before you open the fridge or the cupboard, if you're bored, um, you just put your hand out and say halt and you think hungry angry lonely tired are any of those emotions or feelings driving me eating right now because that really helps to kind of just identify mm -hmm, get conscious about it like because yeah. so much of our day we go through the day kind of on autopilot or you just unconsciously you know you go from one room to another and you realize, oh, why am I in the kitchen? <laughs> am I, it's not, I don't know. It's just. Um, bored isn't on that list. It should be halt, but. Yeah. Because <laughs> I eat all the time when I'm bored. <laughs> Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, bored. Yeah, you're right. Mm, totally. Right? That's awesome. That was uh, episode Nutrition Nuggets 15. We did all about mindful eating and what it is and how to do it. Yeah, I think Sounds it's important funny, <laughs> to appreciate, like, you know, when you go to a fancy restaurant or, well, a most decent restaurant anyway, when they bring the food out, 
they put it down in front of you and the first thing you do is you look at it and you're like, ooh, ah, mm, and it, you sort of appreciate, you sense it, you know, you smell it, you see it, you know, it's, you're taking that in and that's, that's part of being mindful is, is sort of acknowledging what's been presented to you and you can do the same thing at home even if you cook it, you know, when you sit down and make a nice space to eat too, don't just sit like with a bunch of stuff around you and, you know, like make a nice setting and appreciate what you've made for yourself. Take the time to look at it and, and go, wow, that looks amazing. And it, it will taste better. Yeah. And think about it while you're eating Yeah, because it will taste better. Yeah. Actually, we talked about this with Dominique in van life just a few episodes ago, mm -hmm. all about, you know, pulling over and like going to a picnic table and actually getting out of the vehicle or, you know, wherever you are and you're going to eat, make an, a bit of an event around it so that you appreciate it, you savor it, you enjoy that food because it's, it's a celebration of we get to eat now. Yay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it does make a difference. It sounds kind of corny, but it does definitely make a difference. All right. And number 11, the last nutrition tips for fall is stay active. Yeah. Because like we were saying before, it's it's that time of year when we start to slow down and we get a bit more sedentary. You know, you think of the bears, you know, they're hibernating in the winter. Mind you, they're eating like tons because they're hibernating, but we're kind of doing the same in a way. We're, we're slowing down. We're moving inside a bit more. We're not as outdoor active as, as well, most people aren't. There's a lot of people who are still out jogging in the rain, which is amazing. But I think uh, for the most part, people are, are more indoors. So it's important to try to stay active one way or another, however you're, however you're doing it. Yeah. Like, uh, there's maybe biking or, you know, when it's not raining and it's not as hot anymore so that it helps, you know, to, to, if you like to run or to jog or to hike or bike or walk or just play sports inside, maybe in the fall, like badminton is something that starts up or squash or yeah, Hockey. What, whatever you have available locally or just I think we mentioned this the other day too just try to get outside in the rain it's not that bad once you make a habit out of it once we got a dog we you know you got to walk your dog who's kind of <laughs> begging right now to, oh, for our attention if you listen closely you can hear him panting <laughs> in the like, background <laughs> it's like take me for a walk already <laughs> no but I mean that definitely like you, you can't go yeah I don't feel like it today. It's raining. Well, you can, you, but... Well, you can't, yeah, you can, <laughs> but you're not going to have a happy dog. That's true. <laughs> He's going to be giving you those eyes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was like, okay, I guess we got to go. I'll just, uh, yeah, wear the right clothes. And, and then once you're out there, it's really nice. It's fresh and, you know, it's not that bad. So figure out a way to get outside. Yeah, we did an episode, Nutrition Nuggets, on budget ways to get active oh yeah i remember that i don't remember what we said but it there was it all, is nutrition nuggets it was all very wise i'm sure 16 five ways to get active on a budget oh yeah no it's it's a really good one to listen to again perfect all right so we'll go over them really quickly here 11 nutrition tips for fall so buy seasonal produce or not buy it but eat like include it in your meals and snacks Number two, hearty soups and stews. Three, flavor your fall. Four, boost your immunity. Five, watch those portion sizes. Six, whole grains. Include them in your day. Seven, prioritize protein. Eight is eat your breakfast. Nine, enjoy healthy fats. Ten, mindful eating. And 11, get active. There you go. Now, if that doesn't work, because that's the, that's the ultimate list. It is an ultimate list. It is. Yeah. That's Robin Sanders. Well, it's mostly Sanders. Uh, ultimate list of, what's it called? Getting healthy. Healthy N tips for the fall. Nutrition tips for fall. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Awesome. All right. Well, hopefully that's uh, kick-started some people to do uh, some different routines for the fall. Those Cooking are... in the kitchen more and yeah. getting outside in the leaves yeah oh that'll be fun raking that'll be a good uh fall activity yeah. yeah yeah cool all right well hopefully you guys enjoyed that 
if you have any questions, comments, any of that sort of stuff, feel free to give us an email at mywifetherd at gmail.com. Don't forget to check out the website. There's lots of new stuff up there. That's mywifethedietitian.com. And we so appreciate all of the guest articles, blog articles that our guests that we've interviewed for our podcast. They, um... Yeah, they take the time to sort of offer up some thoughts in writing that we can share on our blog. Yeah. And it, well, it's kind of a summary of the conversation we have with them. And it's great because it's just, it gives another dimension to the interview. And it's, uh, it's a really good um, resource for people. It really is. I mean, that website is huge now. It's, there's so much information on there. So it's so fun. I it, love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. We are also on social media Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Got a few things going on there all under My Wife the Dietitian. And don't forget to rate and review the show. We always appreciate that. It helps grow the show. It helps put it in the spotlight a bit more so other people can find it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll be back on Wednesday for Nutrition Nuggets. Yes, we will. And then back again next week for a full episode. Yeah, we got a, another guest. Uh, we'll be interviewing Alden Carroll, a uh, social worker all about peaceful practices and that's next week perfect all right well have a good week everyone we'll be back on wednesday thanks rob thanks for joining us today on my wife the dietitian if you like what you heard don't be shy leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends if you'd like to hear more hit that subscribe button you can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode.